Hi, my name is Robin Wong. I'm a photographer based in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. In this video, I'm going to talk about five times micro focus products push the boundaries of camera making and photography. Let's do this. When digital SLR was dominating the market, Micro Four Thirds was the first to challenge the norm. They introduced the mirrorless concept. They removed the mirror and the penta prism from the camera, introducing cameras that are really small, compact, and yet delivering professional level performance. Over the years, Olympus and Panasonic, they have introduced various Micro Four Thirds products, and some of them truly push the boundaries of camera making. And I want to take a look at some of these products. Number one, Panasonic GM1. Every time someone tells me that, hey, Robin, you know, all the other cameras, the APS-C cameras, or even the full frame mirrorless from Canon, Sony, they're getting smaller and smaller. You know, Micro Four Thirds is losing its advantage. But every time I direct them to this Panasonic GM1, the world's truly tiniest interchangeable lens camera, everyone shuts up. There is no way any APS-C cameras or full frame cameras can make their cameras this small. Personally, I think this Panasonic GM1 is a marvel. Of course, subsequently, Panasonic released the GM5, which includes a little bit more improvements and built-in electronic viewfinder, but I still think this GM1 has a special place in my heart. I've owned it before, I've used it for about a year, and I sold it off to fund the Olympus EP5, and you know what? I regretted that decision. I love this GM1 so much that I repurchased it many years later when I found a really good use deal. Of course, it's not just really small and really tiny. That's not just what this camera is about. It still houses a full-size micro filter sensor. You can change lens to use whatever micro filter lens you want on this camera. It has the full benefit of a true micro filter system. I think GM1 represents what is truly possible, being truly small, truly compact to the extreme end of the micro filter system. When we talk about pushing boundaries, we cannot leave out the Olympus Air. This is the second product from Micro Four Thirds that truly push the boundaries of what's possible with Micro Four Thirds system. I have talked about this before, so I will not dive into the details too much. I'll leave the video up here. Please check it out if you have not done so. In fact, the Olympus Air video is the most popular video in this channel. I think this challenges connectivity. It truly proves what's possible with micro filters, and I think this makes sense. I know a lot of people in that video, they commented, hey, you know what, Olympus didn't really originate with this idea. It actually came from Sony. Sony released this before, blah, blah, blah. But I think Micro Four Thirds makes more sense with this concept, with this modular attachment to the smartphone using the smartphone's interface and immediately after you take a photograph, it transfers to the smartphone. It captures this market where everyone is using the smartphone. It eliminates the step of having to transfer the photographs to the computer and edit it and after that you transfer it back to the smartphone and upload it to social media because everyone is on smartphone today and connect a capable micro photos camera onto the smartphone, I think it's genius. Of course, back then, it is not really ready yet. I think this is the future that came too early. The Bluetooth connectivity or Wi-Fi connectivity wasn't that fast compared to what we have now. And of course, the smartphone wasn't that powerful. The processing wasn't really there. Connection wasn't stable. But everything is improved today. We have faster Bluetooth, faster Wi-Fi. The smartphone is a lot more capable today. I think if Olympus or any other camera manufacturer were to explore this concept, they can truly make it work. And why it makes more sense for Micro Four Thirds, as I mentioned earlier, because Micro Four Thirds lenses are smaller. We have smaller, more optimized lenses from Micro Four Thirds versus APS-C or full frame. You gotta admit, those lenses are a lot larger. So it's made more sense to use this Olympus Air concept with Micro Four Thirds. I think it has pushed the boundaries I also believe that it's worth revisiting today. 
The third micro full threads product that truly pushed the boundaries of imaging is the original Olympus OMD EM5. This was a game changer, not just for the micro full threads world, but for the mirrorless camera and the overall camera market as well. This was the first truly serious mirrorless professional camera. It has blazing fast autofocus. It has magnesium alloy body built, which is really rugged. It is weather sealed. It is the first camera that has 5-axis image stabilization. It's just what a true professional serious camera is supposed to be and the EM5 proved that it is possible. Now there's a lot to like about this camera. With built-in electronic viewfinder, with improved image sensor, the image quality, the performance is very similar to even the best APS-C camera at that time. It closes the gap in terms of image quality to even full frame. And the blazing fast autofocus is almost as fast as the 1DS series cameras from Canon. I'm talking about single autofocus only. And it's just so much potential in this camera, and I think it pushed all the boundaries, every single boundary there is on what a mirrorless camera or a micro focus camera can be. It sets the blueprint, the DNA, and an example for all the future mirrorless cameras to follow. Whatever camera that you see today, even from Sony, Canon, Fuji, it came from this. Olympus EM5, built in electronic viewfinder, powerful image stabilization, rugged build, twin dials, weather sealing, whatever that makes this camera wonderful, all the characteristics, it is available in all the future mirrorless cameras out there. Micro Four Thirds product number four that's truly special is the Panasonic LX100. I don't have an LX100 with me now, but I have owned it previously. I've used it for about one, one year, one and a half year before I sold it off. I really liked it despite its flaws. There were some things that I didn't like, that's why I didn't keep it. But overall, I believe it has pushed the boundaries of what's possible with micro four thirds. It is asking the question of what if we make a compact camera a truly compact camera with a zoom lens, a fixed zoom lens, you can't interchange the lens, and you include a full-size micro photos sensor in the camera. They answered that in the form of LX100. I think it's a very capable camera, despite its really small size, really compact size. It has a very capable zoom lens, amazing lens, fast lens, bright aperture, right? With full-size micro photo sensor in a truly compact camera, why not? My only complaint was it doesn't have a tilt screen or swivel screen. That would have been a perfect vlogging camera, you know, with a fixed lens, fast zoom lens, a one camera solution where you can input your microphone as well, but you can't swivel the screen to see yourself when you are vlogging. Other than that, I think it's a perfect compact travel camera. I definitely think that it's a better solution to, say, a Sony RX100 series, although I believe the Sony RX100 series is even smaller and more pocketable with one inch image sensor, but hey, one inch image sensor versus micro photo sensor. I know some people say, no, nah, the difference isn't really there, but if you truly have used both before, the micro photo still has a lot of advantage. Better fine pixel, fine detail resolving power, better shallow depth of field rendering. That is true, I've compared this before. Even low light performance, high eyes or in dynamic range, there is still a clear advantage. Pretty much when you compare micro four thirds to full frame, full frame will have clear advantage when it comes to the dynamic range, resolution and high ISO. I think micro four thirds is just the perfect middle ground to use to create a compact camera. It can still make the camera really small. I think Panasonic can make it even smaller, the S100. And I hope they include the tilt screen or a swivel screen in the future, who knows? And finally, last but not least, the product that pushed the boundaries from Micro Four Thirds Camp is the Panasonic GH2. The only reason I put this at the bottom, the last, it's not because it's the least important, but because I've never used one before, I've never owned one, I've never even encountered one. I don't even have friends who have one before. So of course, I acknowledge the importance of the Panasonic GH2. I've read enough from the internet to understand how significant this camera is to introduce the Micro Four Thirds as a video-capable solution. It was the GH2. I believe they were hacks made available for the camera. You can use a different 
firmware made by someone else to improve the video capabilities, to push the camera to its limits, to have higher bitrate output for the videos and a few other features that made the GH2 a powerhouse for video shooting. Before that, mirrorless cameras, no one truly look at it from a video shooting point of view, especially micro four thirds. Yeah, you can take really nice photos, but it was the Panasonic GH2 and finally Panasonic Having seen what the GH2 is capable of based on the hacks, they push the GH3 and make it truly video-centric. In fact, Griffin Hammond, he came to Kuala Lumpur, I've attended his workshop before. He was the award-winning photographer for the Sriracha documentary, if I remember correctly. That was shot entirely on the Panasonic GH3. So Panasonic GH2, GH3, they push the boundaries on video. That's all I have to share about the five products that I personally think push the boundaries of imaging, camera making, and photography from the Micro Four Thirds camp. Do you agree with my list of products? Or do you have any other products to add into the list? Please let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear your thoughts. If you found my sharing beneficial, please consider buying me a cup of coffee or you can contribute directly to my PayPal. Links in the description below on how I can do that. Any small contribution will definitely help me to continue making videos and publish them right here. Please give me a thumbs up, comment, share and subscribe. I'll definitely see you again in the next one. Until then, remember to go out and take more photographs. Bye-bye.